We are going to look at the nine things you need to win uh, in order to go for topicality. We're going to begin by going by talking about when you are going for topicality. The first thing is is that it should be all six minutes of the two and R. Remember, judges don't really want to evaluate uh, analytical arguments or arguments that are with, without substantive evidence. They want to be able to point to pieces of evidence and say, this piece of evidence is good, this piece of evidence is bad, it's why I vote one way or the other. So when you are going for topicality, you want to not give them the proclivity or even option to be able to evaluate any other piece of paper that uh, might have been had in the debate and make it just about topicality. This way it forces the judge's hand to evaluate that flow. Second thing to note about when going for T is that you have to answer all the other theoretical objections. So if there is a theoretical reason why the counterplan or the critique might not be uh, okay inside of a debate, you have to be able to answer it and also explain why topicality should come first. Usually you'll make arguments about how the affirmative uh, sets the terms for the debate, and so if they weren't topical, then the debate wasn't possible to begin with. And then lastly, it's a great tool because you only need a couple cards and really well thought out blocks as to what the resolution should be about and kind of what that model of education uh, and fairness should be inside of debate as a norm. And you're going to be able to compete with squads that have a lot more evidence production and counter some of those by having good T arguments. There are nine parts to any good 2 and R that goes for topicality. Definition, violation, standards, f explanation as to why fairness is a voting issue, five AFs that would be topical, five AFs that would be topical under their interpreta interpretation that are bad, how the AF could have been topical, why potential abuse is a voter, and an explanation of in-round abuse. We'll start with definition. What makes your definition better? Is it a common person? Is it legal? Is it contextual? Intent to define. If you remember from the introduction video, these are kind of the reasons why definitions can be better than others. You want to make sure that you are making arguments as to why the source of your definition is one that should be preferred over theirs and explain why it is a better source of information and a better metric for understanding definitions when going for topicality. Second is the violation. You want to explain why your definition excludes the AF. You need to explain what specific portions are problematic and how does it spike out of key ground? What do you lose the ability to read inside of the debate because of the way they worded the plan text and were not topical in maybe a lot of different ways or one specific way that you are going for in this debate. The second component of the violation is that you want to explain what the AF is, i.e., e.g., the affirmative isn't foreign assistance, that's the exclusion, the AF is security assistance, it's naming. By explaining what it is, then it allows the judge to be very certain as to what exactly the AF is, and it establishes a more clear bright line between what is and is not topical in, in the for the resolution. Standards. These are going to be the typical extension of all of your arguments. Make sure to explain what the goal of the topic education is. Is it a solvency mechanism? Is it the advantage for area focus? Is it what exactly are we supposed, is the nuanced thing that we are supposed to be learning about the topic? That needs to be explained here when you extend across your standards as justification as to why your interpretation is better. You also need to explain that fairness is a voter. You need to explain that it's not usually a question of education, but really uh, ground in is the negative able to be able to have a fair debate against the affirmative, one in which is not relying upon usually generic arguments in order to beat back the affirmative. And the justification for this is that scholarships, GTA positions are all on the line uh, based upon wins and losses, and so you don't want to play against somebody who's cheating or stacking the deck against you because that is money that is for your 
Next thing is the five topical AFs. You want a list, just simply a list. Explain what produces good ground for both sides and why it gets to the goal of the education of what the topic should be about and explain why those five topical AFs all meet those goals that you are having about what a good resolution would be producing after a year of debate. This is also key because Inevitably, they are going to go for a counterinterpretation, and when they go for their counterinterpretation, you want a list of five AFs that they allow based upon their interpretation. Now, the key is is you want to make them look like uh, make them make it look like AFs that people would actually read. And if you really want to up your game, you would have solvency advocates for these different AFs that you're proposing, and then you need to go a step further and say why that disrupts the AFNEG division of, of ground and makes it impossible to be negative, or at least produce a bad norm for how the topic should be divided between the AF and the NEG. You want to have a topical aversion. You want to explain that if there's any education arguments that they say are key um, from their solvencies, their links, their impacts, that that would be accessible with a topical version of the affirmative. Usually when you have these topical versions in regular T debates, what's going to happen is you are going to you are going to look at a plan text that is very hyper specific and realize that 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 hyper specific plan text is actually just a fraction of a much larger AF. And when that's the case, usually teams could read the advantage that they are reading right now with a more broad affirmative that has to defend a few more things and therefore allows for an equitable division of AF and NEG ground. Be careful here. There is a trend right now going on in debate that you need to be able to, pr to prove why your topical version is able to solve all of your standards. So keep that in mind and know that if there's any press or pushback against that question, that you need to be on top of your game and explain why the topical version would still produce uh, the education and ground that you are looking for via your standards that you have explained in the 2 and R. The next thing you got to make sure that you do when you are going for T in the 2 and R is explain why potential abuse is a voter. This is a reason why competing interpretations is good or reasonability is bad. The quick ones are, one, it sends a messi message to be topical. If teams lose consistently, then they will, they will need to switch up what they are doing in order to try to pursue more wins. Second argument is that winners get modeled. If they are winning a whole bunch of rounds with this affirmative, then other teams think that it be, is a good AF and that they could read that AF or justify their newly untopical AF based upon the community allowing your AF that is being used right now. And then third, reasonability encourages judge intervention because there's no clear bright line and it's not based upon what happened in the debate, but instead the judge's prior knowledge, that is how they determine whether it is reasonably topical or tangential enough to the topic to be allowed. And you don't want that. You want the debate to be judged according to what happened inside of the walls that you are debating in. So you want to make sure that you are making arguments as to why potential abuse is a voter and why reasonability is a bad standard. Then, if you can, you really want to try to explain in-round abuse. What links were spiked out of? Why was the debate impossible for you to be able to win? You want those explanations uh, in order for the judge to be able to look at the affirmative team and be like, listen, you screwed up. You made it impossible for them to win. You need to be voted down. They did a good job in the 2 and R, etc., etc. So with those nine things, you can use topicality as a great equalizer against teams that have lots and lots and lots of cards cut for them. And so you always want to make sure that you can go for T at any given moment and be able to go for it effectively. By following these nine things, hopefully you will know that with a little bit of forethought and some pre-round preparation, you can go for topicality too and use it as the great equalizer. I'm Daniel Stout of Johnson County Debate, and this has been Debate Learning.